Let's talk about color checker passport photo too. You probably noticed that I photographed it during my previous photo shoot. When I was satisfied with the light, I gave it to my model and I made sure I've got a photo at each lighting setup. I still have an old version from X-Ride, however, it is exactly the same in terms of functionality with the currently offered model from Calibrite. So what is this and why do I use it? Thanks to the fact that I photographed it in each set, regardless of the conditions, I will be sure that my output colors are accurate and true to reality. And of course, if you photograph any products or like me fashion, this is an indispensable tool to be sure that the colors are correct. Also, when you've got two different cameras, this color checker helps you to bring down the colors to the same base, to the same level. Also, it will help you to get rid of any color bias because each camera has some tint. Even if I photograph a fashion editorial where these colors do not necessarily have to be real, I always try to use color checker and color profiling because this is easier and faster for me to color grade a bunch of photos while having the same starting point. Also, if you have presets and you shoot in different lighting conditions, it will save you time and help you to make the whole session more coherent. Now I want to show you how to create a custom color profile. First of all, I need to open my raw file with color checker passport. Whether it's going to be camera raw, Lightroom or a capture one, it doesn't matter because the idea is the same. I need to convert it into DNG file. Here we go. Save as DNG on my desktop. And I'm going to open a software dedicated for this color checker. Now I'm going to drag my newly created DNG file. Here we go to this tiny square and it's going to load an image and try to find these tiny color squares. Let's see how it, how it does. Here we go. It detected my squares, my colorful squares. I can drag it just to make sure it's exactly where it's supposed to be. And I'm going to create a profile. I'm going to name, name it as D850 pink dress, save. It's going to save my camera profile. I'll need to reset my camera row. And reopen my picture again in camera row. Here we go. Now I'm going to find and look my newly created profile in here. However, it won't be right away here because these are only highlighted. These are only favorite profiles, which I use often. So I need to go here, browse, profiles, Here we go, D850 pink dress. I'm going to highlight it and go back to the menu. Here we go, this is my Adobe color default. And this one is my newly created profile again. As you can see, the difference is huge. Let me show you side by side. So basically what I gain by using this uh, color checker passport is intensivity. Look at the blues, pinks. Well, basically they're more saturated and they look much, much nicer and more natural. And what else I can do in while having this color checker passport? I can do my white balance. Usually I'm using that square. This is, um, well, making sure that my white balance is correct. However, these two rows are also dedicated for the white balance. This is for the portrait neutral, while this is for the landscape. It works like this, that if I would like to warm up my portrait, I can just basically click, click here and it warms it up. This is neutral. Again, this one in the middle with this tiny half of the circle is neutral, but this is dedicated for landscapes. When I press on minus, it's going to cool down my picture. And when I'm going to click here, it's going to warm up my landscape. So that would be it. As you can see, the difference is absolutely immense.